Hi guys, it's Mandy and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to building in Dragon Quest Builders 2. So let's get into it. Okay, so there's a lot of advice I should give, but um, I'm just going to take on like what pops into my head. <laughs> so yeah, take that as you will. Anyways, so my first recommendation is always have this on you always this is where you build all of your stuff and it's portable that means you could take it you could carry it put it down you could um smash it and it's a little bitty in your pocket and you can even do that so that's your workbench and you don't want to lose it <laughs> there was times where was building something and I literally like lost my workbench I was like where did I put my workbench so always have it on you in your inventory and have different ones like there is the classic workbench uh, there's one for changing color magic workbench um, Advil important uh, forge and uh, your cooking stuff so Always keep your building essentials with you. Do not drop them off and just leave without them. Always take at least one. Now, for me, I have one of these in um, mostly every location, if not all of them. Because it's like what I do my stuff with. So, I always keep a bunch and I always have a bunch laying around and all that good stuff now ignore these people they're sleeping on the floor but uh yeah so next one is always have a fire or a brick barbecue kitchen counter whatever you can get your hands on first that helps you cook because there is a meter next to your like um hp bar and that tells you how hungry you are now you don't want to be out and hungry because every move you make you will automatically like stagger and like you know the whole I'm tired thing and that's bad when you know you're fighting enemies or you're trying to build something and you can't so I always like to keep ingredients with me because those are the only things you could cook with unless you have like fruits nearby um, I would recommend always hoarding a bunch of ingredients like eggs you can find claws very easily because there's a lot of ocean even in the winter area there's ocean uh, hoard all your cabbages from the farming place and just a whole bunch of stuff you get from all over the place just hoard them if they're ingredients of food so you could go ahead and cook them so when you want to eat you're not starving in the middle of nowhere because that happens to me so here you go now a fire gives you one spot to cook like you can only cook an egg the frying pan gives you two so you could cook like a claw and you know something else and um the barbecue bonfire thing gives you like three so you can make soups and whatnot. So this one comes in handy. Why do I always have my workbench? <laughs> but this one's a little bigger, but that one comes in handy. Because you can like uh, put three ingredients. Now you can't put any three ingredients. Usually it will let you know if you could cook something or if it's just like, what are you doing? You would know that because it won't let you cook it, but if it's okay, press A, do that high thing, and uh, collect your food. Now, uh, when I'm about to go out to gather materials or for story purposes, I always like pack a lunch <laughs> before I go. <laughs> because like I said, you don't want to be outside when it's, um, when you're hungry and you don't have anything to eat. So, yeah. There's that tidbit. Next tidbit, I think I should go over like actual building. 
So let me go to a place where it's relatively empty. Here goes the ghost. Okay. Since the ghost is here, I'll take time to talk about the ghost. Uh, a good way to avoid the ghost is to be in like areas where there's fire or well lit areas are very good because they don't like um, light. Another good way is to get your booty to bed. But yeah, get to bed quickly. Now the NPCs can sleep on the floor and everywhere but you, oh my god he's like curled up on the, oh, but you have to sleep on an actual bed. Oh, and that goes perfectly with my next suggestion. Always keep a bed with you. Even if it's a hot pocket bed, a straw bed, a bed bed, uh, any bed, a coffin, if that's what you're into. Um, just plop it down. Go in it. And sleep. <laughs> the ghost goes away. And... You get a little bit of energy now you don't need to necessarily sleep it's more to pass the time and not deal with the ghost so there's that the only things you really need to keep track of is your hunger oh and also some foods give you stats like defense uh, attacks and all that but i'll get that i'll get more into it when i talk about the combat I hate the combat. Alright, so I'm gonna go to empty spots so I can show you some how to's. Alright, so this is a little bit more for people who've been building a while and kind of stuff I learned. Yeah, I have a lot of stuff. Don't at me. <laughs> Get rid of that scorpion first. All right, so a good thing to do is start with placing an item. Now, instead of going like this and going to the other side and like this and going to the other side and like this and kind of like like that, it's kind of slow, and you might miss your mark. Like you might go like you were over here or something. So instead of doing that, you hold um, you hold the L button, and that like points you up. But it also gives you like a grip, so like you go like this. See that is way faster than um, if I were to do it the other way. And plus, it's steadier. It keeps you in the line so yeah and if you press ZL you look down so in my case I can't put anything down there right here so I could put it down like that bam, 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 bam. so that's pressing L LZ LZ yeah so and then if you press both of them together you go straight <laughs> so you go like this bum, bum. now this one's kind of iffy because you have to hold both l and zl together but it still gives you that steady thing so you can just put blocks bunch of blocks without a care And as you go on, the faster you go, as com like, as more comfortable you get, the faster you'll go. So yeah, and same works for the hammer. So like, if you're holding the hammer, hammer, sorry, and you want to go like straight, so you hold both of them, and there you go. You don't have to worry about moving out of place. And it's good for getting a nice straight line without, you know, going like this, and then this, and then blah, 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 blah. so, especially with the hammer. 
because once you bash something, especially if you get like the powerful hammers, they could break in like one hit and you're like, oh damn, I didn't want to break that and it just ruins the whole flow. So yeah, keep that in mind. So next we're going to do like vertically. Like if you want to stack them high. So for this one, you press B to jump and you press a ZL. So you jump, ZL, boom, jump, ZL, boom, jump. Now, you don't have to press ZL all the time. Um, you can hold it down while you just press B jump, press B jump, press B jump. And see, you could go really high. You don't have to like make a whole staircase kind of thing. Um, do try to make areas where you could walk on. If you know a place where you can't really reach or whatever, chances are you could just pop a block like these are like defying gravity <laughs> and you'll be fine you could just make your own uh road you could pave your own way and yeah so there's that technique now i am going to show you the uh first person point of view yeah you get you have fall damage by the way so first person point of view is good i personally like just third person point of view but it is good if you want to like get precise or get somewhere where you can't usually reach like with um third person point of view like I could go to there but if I go to first person which is pressing the R stick and see I could go a little bit farther not much but you could go farther than you would if you were like in third person so there's that also there's um kind of this little thingy the arrows and so if you just place them you could just go like this just press x and it'll pretty much do them by itself well a few rows and it could get nice and fast but like i said i like third person now you could combine like first person and what i told you third person where okay press the block i could hold on um, uh z not z i could hold l and zl together so i'm a little steady and i could go right here now it doesn't work as well as third person but it still gives you a little bit something more steady so you can just build lines and rows and rows of blocks so yeah i'm gonna have fun demolishing this um so yeah that's pretty much your basics um on building and something like another helpful hint is always try to get materials from like weird places. If you're in an enemy base or something and there's a floor that you like, take it. <laughs> um, just take it because you're going to need a lot of materials. But you will soon find out that they're really easy to get. Like certain ones are really easy to get. Earth and, you know, stone, all that is pretty basic easy now there's more rare materials like gold um the thing that's most rare is like bricks or designs patterns and stuff carpet that's more um rare but yeah you could pretty much get material out of anything even the enemies drop material so if you need something and you really don't know where to get it you can always go to your monsters and it tells you what they drop or what they carry that means what they drop and so like if you need kelp or something you know this guy has kelp or potato comes from this guy <laughs> always look at that and blueprints i won't talk about blueprints there's nothing it's kind of cut and dry <laughs> but you will just get a bunch of stuff and what i like to do 
go to my inventory just press x and it tidies it up so usually all your greens and seeds food stuff will be over here all your weapons will be usually in the first page too depends on how big your um inventory is and the second page will usually have all your blocks and i got a lot of them so these don't go past 99 or 999 so they just make a new one you accumulate a lot of stuff i thought this was a lot of space but i've come to realize that ain't enough space <laughs> you as you go on you kind of get to know your inventory better and you will find stuff fairly quickly at first it might be like well, okay where is everything but then it gets more organized all your stuff are nicely put um now if it has that exclamation point that means it's part of a quest or a mission so you kind of need it and that really helps you because the npcs give you a lot of stuff like oh i want this room with uh, x amount of flags x amount of um tables and uh pots four pots they're so random and they're so like weird so you often forget them so those exclamation points are really handy that means you need it for something you do want to get your npcs to be doing stuff there's nothing worse than your npcs just complaining not doing anything so they do a lot of stuff but you just gotta tell them what to do you gotta give them the ingredients you gotta tell them what to do and they'll pretty much do it on their own you just gotta be like do this so like right now npcs make their own food they put it on the table see the little girl with the bread and you can even open it and get some food so if you're running low on food, always go to your local farm area <laughs> for more details. Oh, and you could befriend monsters, but I don't think that's relevant right now. <laughs> and they grow crops. So basically, in the farmland, you learn that these guys are key. If you put a scarecrow somewhere, you get the worm. And then the farmers go plow the land and if you want to put seeds, so let's say I want to throw in, not a coffee bean, a cabbage, a cabbage seed. You go to where they're planting cabbages and you go to the nearest chest, take the seed, put it in there. And then they'll take care of the rest. But, like I said, you have to tell them what to do. So, you have to go to the Scarecrow, examine it, and you could uh, pick certain vegetables that they focus on. And um, they'll farm it. Your farming people will farm very good if you tell them how to farm. <laughs> and that is it for class 1 of Dragon uh, Quest Builders. To. now as I go on and learn new stuff I will of course let you guys know this was just sort of like an impromptu thing for people who are playing the game or you know thinking of playing the game or just a curious um, so yeah so with all that being said I'm sorry I got distracted okay so I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Uh, subscribe if you like the video. And um, like the video if you like the video. You know what I mean. Uh, ring the ding ding that bell. Oh, and in every kind of major island, you will find that there's a bell. So the bell serves two purposes. To bring the, the island people together, so you don't have to go look for them. And, yeah, that's a wanky bell. Don't at me. And it collects, like, all the gratitude hearts. So you don't have to go around collecting every little heart. Okay, what was I saying? If you like the video, please hit that like button. And if you, uh, uh, like myself, subscribe. And ring a ding ding that bell. Uh, so you can get every notification when a video comes out. 
or you know a live stream so with all that being said i hope you guys have a beautiful day and play a good game bye